Good morning. Glad to be able to join with you in worshiping our Lord and raising our praises in honor of Him. This morning, we begin a, a little bit of a, a series for the next few weeks. And as you maybe saw in our beginning slides that were here for pre-service, it, it focuses on hard truths, things that are maybe not as easy to hear, and yet there's a truth in each and every one of them. And as we focus on those things this morning, probably one of the uncomfortable topics that people don't like to talk about is, is some going to heaven and some not. And so when you talk about it, you have to realize that Jesus says things for our benefit. He says things to, to warn us, to encourage us, to admonish us, all these different things all at the same time. And so as we hear God's word this morning, we hear him focusing on this hard truth. But in doing so, he gives us an opportunity to feed our hearts and souls with his word and, and to share with us the very way that he wants us to understand how that works and, and what it means for us. As we focus on God's Word this morning, during our prayer, the church will be speaking some special prayers for Lillian Hasse. We want to continue to pray that God would bring recovery. She had that heart procedure a little over a week ago here. Uh, for Connie Graber, uh, she had surgery this last week, uh, and we're going to ask that God would give her a quick recovery and that she would be able to uh, have some relief from some of the pain that she had been having. And for Scott Breiling, who was recently injured at his job, and he also would ask the Lord uh, for healing for his injuries as well. We focus on these things as we praise our Lord. Uh, if you haven't had a, a moment to do so yet this morning, take a moment and welcome one of your brothers or sisters in Christ. We praise our Lord with our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, hymn 621.
Would you please rise with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Please be seated. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for this morning are the final verses of the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 18 through 24. In these closing words Isaiah, of Isaiah, they point to the glory of the New Testament church, a church that will be gathered of the people of all nations, something that we look forward to as well. As for me, because of their works and their thoughts, the time is coming for me to gather people from all nations and all languages. They will come and they will see my glory. Then I will set up a sign among them, and I will send out survivors from among them to nations, to Tarshish, Pool and Lud, and to those who are archers, to Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands, who have not heard my message and have not seen my glory. Then they will declare my glory among the nations. Then they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will bring them on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and dromedaries and to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. In the same way that the people of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel to the Lord's house, even from among these people, I will take priests and Levites, says the Lord. For just as the new heavens and the new earth that I am making will remain standing before me, declares the Lord, in the same way your offspring and your name will stand. As often as one new moon follows another and one Sabbath follows another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. They will go out and they will see the corpses of the ones who were rebelling against me. For their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched and all flesh will be horrified by them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 103. Our faculty up in the balcony will sing the first refrain and the verses.
Our second reading is from the writer to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 18 through 24. The writer here contrasts two significant mounts, that of Mount Zion and that of Mount Sinai. And what difference in those two things? The word of the Lord is brought at both places, and then he points us to Zion, to the new Jerusalem, to the heaven that will be. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and to burning fire, to darkness, to gloom, to a raging storm, to the sound of a trumpet, and to a voice that spoke. Those who heard that voice asked that not one more word be added, because they could not endure what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that even Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to tens of thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, to God who is the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous people who have been made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a New Testament, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please rise with me out of respect for our reading of the gospel lesson and we join in the acclamation. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 30. This will serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. He went on his way from one town and village to another, teaching and making his, ways, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? He said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know you or where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from the east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And note this, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You can be seated We'll join in our hymn of the day, 10,000 Reasons. It is hymn 607. Please note our faculty is going to sing the first refrain and stanzas one and two.
God's grace and blessings are yours through your Savior Jesus, brothers and sisters, amen. Back in June, my family and I took a little trip. We went to Universal Studios in Orlando, and it was one of those trips that we had been planning for a long time. In fact, I put off that trip. We had been planning that trip like four years ago, uh, and then the Lord said, no, I'm going to give you a call to Stevensville. And so we didn't call, but we finally took a trip. And you imagine, you can imagine what that's like when you first get there. You, you think you have everything figured out. And, and we thought we did. We had everything purchased, did all that, got through all the par- four levels of parking ramp that you first get when you get there, through the security, through all the restaurants that are there, through all, you finally get to the front of the gate. And we get there and we're getting our family through the turnstiles. And they tell us that some of our tickets aren't valid. Now maybe you've had something like that happen to you before. Maybe you understand that feeling. That feeling of saying, I I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You think you got everything you need, then there's a problem. And it's quite the predicament that I found myself in to have half my kids through those things on the other side And my wife and I and my two youngest standing uh, on the other side and they're saying, you can't go in. After that uh, initial panic subsided, and and after having had to spend our first hour at three different customer counters trying to get it figured out, we finally were able to be let in. And all I could think for that whole hour was someone made a mistake and it wasn't me. They have to let me in. My kids are in there. They have to let me in. I was surprised, yes. Had that feeling like I was missing out because they all went and decided to do stuff without us. And at the same time, that thought of being separated from my kids uh, it, it, it was pretty intense to say, they can't, and we're in this place we've never been. We don't live there. I would say, though, that missing out on some time at that theme park and, and some time with uh, my kids, even though I, I knew we were going to be all right and, and I was sure of it, I, I, I trusted them a little bit, had some other adults along, that, that idea, that feeling, that that thought that I was going to miss out on something is pretty minimal at that place and at that time compared to what Jesus is talking about in our lessons for today. You got to hear some beautiful pictures in those first few lessons of ours. And then you get to our gospel lesson and you realize that's not exactly what he's talking about. It is, but it isn't. Jesus sometimes says words that can seem fairly blunt, and I would venture to say even cold. They come off at least that way. And over the next few weeks, you'll see our lessons do that. We're presented in the next few weeks with a bunch of hard truths that we have to contemplate. They're meant for us to digest. They're meant for us to apply to our everyday lives. And our Lord speaks these hard truths to us for a reason. And the Spirit uses those words and He uses those things to help us grow and mature in faith. But that doesn't mean that they're easy to hear. And in 
our lesson for today, Jesus responds to a question that someone asked him. It says, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? And his response is, strive to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. And if you notice, Jesus doesn't directly address the question. He doesn't say, I'll give you a number. He doesn't tell him anything like that. He doesn't address the question in, re- in response to how many. Rather, he answers with a response of how any will be saved. So who are the many? Who are the many he's referring to? Who are the many who are going to be surprised thinking the same that I did when I was standing at that gate going, someone made a mistake? Who is it? To the people that Jesus was speaking, it may have been the Pharisees or the people of Israel who thought that they were going to be the first ones in line when God decided to let people into heaven. Maybe it was those who who followed Jesus for a time but then slowly just kind of wafted away. And maybe it could have been those who wanted to follow him until they realized it was going to cost them something personally. How about you and me? How about us hearing these words right now? Could it be that you and I know those, those many, as those who, who don't have time for their Savior that maybe you and I haven't seen in a while? I suppose it could be. It could be those who make excuses about feeding their faith with God's Word. They don't have time for it. There's too many other things getting in the way. Could it be those who think they are in good standing with God because they were baptized and or maybe they were confirmed even here at St. Paul's? Could it be any of the people we have that are on a membership list? Could it be you sitting here this morning thinking that You've got heaven wrapped up because you spent your one week, one hour of the week here in this space. To the discerning heart and ears, sounds pretty ominous. To those who don't like to hear of such things as some going to heaven and some going to hell, it certainly doesn't sound kind and it doesn't sound loving. It doesn't sound like the kind of beautiful hymn we just sang. And yet, when we realize what our mission and our purpose is, and you know it as our mission statement of our church, have you thought of it in a while? We worship the triune God. We encourage one another to grow stronger in faith through daily use of the word. And we share his pure gospel message of redeeming grace with a sinful world. So that many, we hope, will one day be in heaven. I think what strikes us when we hear Jesus' words and why they're hard to take is because it means there's going to be people in heaven and there's going to be people in hell. That we know. But we also know this. It's going to touch us personally. It's not going to be everybody else out there. It's going to touch us personally. I, yes, I would say it could happen even here. It could happen right here. Would you guess that a third of our congregation is considered inactive right now? Would you think that it's good? Shouldn't it be concerning to us that only a quarter of our congregation shows up on a weekly basis? Doesn't it cause us concern doesn't it get to the heart of it and and we start to wonder and say well what's going on how do we how do we change that that's a cause for concern that someone you love family or friend son or daughter parent someone close to you could be in danger of not entering into heaven because they're not serious about their relationship with jesus Jesus' words here this morning also indicate that 
There's those who even claim to be believers who think that they've got their ticket. They've got their ticket for entrance, and yet they're going to be denied when they get there. Unlike the tickets that I bought for Universal, God doesn't make mistakes, though. He sees into everyone's heart. He sees our feelings. He sees the truthfulness of it. He sees the honesty when it comes to that relationship with Him. And this morning is no room for us to be self-righteous about others and ourselves. It, it, God's Word apply to every one of us. There's no comparisons today. To all, He says, there are some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. What that means is if one claims to be a believer and then doesn't practice or cherish or nourish the faith that God has gifted to them in worship, in confession of sins, in the feeding of their faith with His Word, in rejoicing in forgiveness, to them Jesus presents a sobering possibility that He might say, I don't know you. Of course, we don't want that for ourselves. We don't want to hear those words, and we don't want to hear them uttered to anybody else, do we? We love the people in our lives. We love the people that we know. We love the people we don't know. We love people that we're still going to meet in our lives and we want them to enjoy the riches of eternity with us. We want that for them. And so Jesus is blunt and he's pointed with his words for a reason because he loves you and me also. When you want to hear the truth from someone, you're not going to go tell, ask someone who's going to tell you all things are rosy when they're not. When you want the truth, you want someone who's going to say it no matter what it is. You want someone to call a spade a spade. And so Jesus doesn't mince any words. He says, narrow is the door to heaven. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that at all, and yet I need to. And so do you. And when we hear those words, we can do one of two things. We can either take those words of Jesus and we can push them aside, we can deny them and ignore them, or we can take them to heart and we can seek the way that we know makes us certain that we will be in heaven one day. We will be at that Mount Zion, that new Jerusalem that the, writers to the Hebrew was ta- writer to the Hebrews was talking about. If you noticed, Jesus turned this hard truth into quite an encouragement. Our text began by telling us that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And this is that final journey he's making to Jerusalem to offer himself up as the lamb of sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He was going to give himself up as the price of purchase for everyone's lives. He was going to go through hell for us, for the whole world. And he has no desire to see anyone perish. No one, not a single one. He is warning us because he doesn't want us or anyone else to throw away this precious salvation that he's won. He loves you. He wants you to live with him forever. And so his, his encouragement then is this. Strive. Strive to enter through the narrow door. In the same way last week you heard of him speak of himself as the gate. You heard, he, you heard Jesus call himself the good shepherd in our text that Pastor spoke on last week. He calls himself the narrow door. He's the only way that anyone is saved. And in this world that wants to stick everything all together in universalism, say everybody has this path to heaven, he says, no, 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 no. He funnels us down to that one spot 
And he answers the question of how any receive the pleasures of heaven. And he says, enter through that narrow gate, and it is him. He says we have to strive daily to enter through this narrow door. And that's the ongoing struggle that each of us has to endure. That's that everyday thing. He's given us a gift of faith. And by the Spirit, we have this personal relationship with our Savior. So his encouragement is, hold on to it. Hold on to it with everything you have. You have to strive because you are going to contend every single day with your own nature that says there's got to be a better way. There's got to be an easier way. You're going to contend with a world that despises and dismisses all these hard truths and says, nope, can't be. And you have Satan that works hard every day. He, if he can convince anyone to say that there is an easier way to get through those gates of heaven, he loves it when they say it, it has to be. He says, strive. That's where this real, honest, active relationship with our Savior is so meaningful. We don't deserve a thing from God. And yet He loves us every single day. He simply gives us a promised inheritance that He's earned on our behalf. He took all that pressure of anything having to do with it off of our shoulders and took the burden on himself. And he demands no specified amount of time or work or effort or money or anything else. He says, believe. Believe in me. And we now have access then, by faith in Jesus, access to heaven And with repentant hearts, we yearn for the promises of God's truth. As hard as they may be to understand and take in at times, we yearn for those very things because they remind us of the precious promise that He makes. And we rejoice then in the forgiveness that is ours as redeemed children of God. We can't lose sight of it. We can't lose sight of it. We can't miss it. And we don't want to. Because it's there that we find real joy. And we find life. And we find relief. Jesus calls himself the door. It's a narrow door. But it's still open. Now. And that means we have to get serious. Get serious about spiritual matters. Our gospel acclamation puts it so very well. You sang it. People will come from the east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. What wonderful news. Our lessons focused on it. That is awesome to contemplate. That is awesome to imagine. This heavenly banquet where people from all over the world of every age and era will be gathered there for this wonderful day. But there's a day when everything that you and I see, a day in the future when it will change. Not the picture, but the door. There's a day coming when that door will close as Jesus spoke in our lesson. There's a day, whether it be that you draw your last breath or the day that Jesus appears on the clouds, there's a day coming when that door shuts. And knowing that, it pushes us, it drives us, it motivates us to speak these very same truths with an attitude of concern and love for the people of our family, for the people of our family of faith, And for those who are just outside your front doors, we know there's a day when it's going to close. And that means we got to act now. God gives each of us each other. 
He gives each of us, each other, to remind as well as to encourage one another in this daily striving and this daily purpose that we have here and now. When I think back, I go all the way back to that adverse picture. I, I think back to my time a couple months ago at Universal. I don't ever want to feel that way again. I don't ever want to feel like I'm going to be missing out. And I never want to feel again that separation that happens between me and my children. I don't want that for my family, and I certainly don't want it with any relationship that I have with anyone. Whether it be someone I'm going to meet, whether it be someone, uh, one of you, whether it be, be someone that I've had in my past, I don't want that. And I don't think you do either. So let's ask God today to give us courage, to give us strength, to give us determination that we continue to strive for that narrow door for ourselves and in love support and remind others of their need to do the same. That we prioritize our relationship with our Savior because it literally means heaven for us. Amen. Would you please rise with me? The peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our loving Savior. Amen. Would you please join in confessing with me our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed? We confess. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You can be seated. We join in prayer of the church. Lord, as your words touch our hearts and minds, they take our wisdom and they turn it on its head. Our natures don't want to listen to your serious warnings or urgent encouragements yet. By the faith you've begun in us, we know that we not only need to hear your voice speak of these truths, but keep them ingrained in our hearts. For these words are truth and they give eternal life. Help us, Lord, to meditate on them this whole week and be moved to action by your gospel and by your grace. We thank you for the successful procedures that you've granted to Lillian Hasse and Connie Graber. Allow both of them the ability to resume their daily activities to find relief from their earthly struggles as they focus on your promises of heavenly peace. We also ask you to grant healing to Scott Brineling so that he too can resume his work. Give him the assurance that you can use this too to give him rest of body and soul and encourage him to use this time wisely in your word. 
we only ask and only dare to ask such things because you are gracious and merciful to us, dear Lord. So we come before you praying that you would not only bless us, but guide us, direct us all by your holy word. Lead us to its truths again and let us take them to heart. In your name we ask and pray. Amen. We now take a moment uh, to worship our Lord with our offerings. My friends, we have the pleasure of installing Mrs. Amy Wetzel uh, to be a third and fourth grade teacher in our school for this coming year. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to his church, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. The Savior loves children and desires to share all promises with them. Christian schools provide believers with a unique opportunity to nourish the faith of children that they may walk with Christ throughout their lives. Amy, St. Paul's has called you to serve as a third and fourth grade teacher in the public ministry of the gospel here at St. Paul's. As a servant of Christ, you are to teach all your classes in the light of God's word and lead your students to understand God's holy law and saving gospel. You are to keep them in your prayers and guide and guard their spiritual growth. You are to set aside time for personal study of the scriptures so that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. You are to strive to be an example of Christian faith and life so that others may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You are to work together with the parents of your students so that the witnessing of law and gospel may be consistent at home and at school. You are to serve alongside the other called workers in this ministry with love and patience and respect. In all your tasks and responsibilities, our Lord Jesus equips you with the gospel of forgiveness of sins, the gift that makes you truly competent as a servant of Christ. St. Paul wrote, not, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. In keeping with the word and will of the Lord, I ask you before God and his people, do you believe that the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired and inerrant word of God and the only source of truth for faith and ministry? If so, then say, I do. Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian as faithful testimonies to the truths of Holy Scripture? And do you reject all the errors that they condemn? If so, then say, I do. Do you solemnly promise that all your service in its various forms will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran Confessions? If so, then say, I do. I do. 
Will you endeavor to live a life that reflects the love of God, the love God has for you, so that all may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven? If so, then say, I will, and ask God to help me. Are you willing to carry out this work according to the grace that God gives? If so, then say, I am, and I ask God to help me. Friends of Christ, you've heard the promises spoken by Mrs. Wetzel, who you have called to serve our congregation. I encourage you to receive her with joy and remember what the Word of God calls you to do, to work together with her for the benefit of the Lord's kingdom so that your shared service may bring spiritual blessings to the Savior's people. Support her as she teaches the young so that she, they may be brought up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Keep her and her work in your prayers so that her ministry may be blessed and that she may carry out her work with joy to provide for her physical needs. For the Savior says the worker deserves his wages. To honor and love her as St. Peter encourages all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. And I now ask you in the presence of God, are you willing to receive Mrs. Wetzel as a servant of Christ? Will you show her love and honor and support her with your gifts and prayers? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen you to do what you have promised. My friends, will you please rise with me? We continue with this sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. We give thanks to you, O God, that through your, your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit. Unite us as one and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray, O Lord, as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. During distribution, we will sing the distribution hymns that are listed in our worship folder and up on the screen. If you're a member of our congregation, please speak with me uh, or uh, my associate about what it means to be a member of a Wells or Ells congregation. The Lord's table is now ready.
Please rise with me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to join in our closing hymn. May the peace of God hymn 929. Once again, a good morning to you. I'm glad I had the opportunity to share God's word with you. Uh, and I hope you do meditate on what God says and <clears throat> uh, the words that he speaks to us, uh, although hard at times to hear, are what we need to hear. So we, we focus on them. Just a few announcements. Our growth group sign-up is on the circular table in the narthex. If you'd like to uh, sign up for the next grouping of, of growth groups, Today there is Bible class, uh, the last, uh, Pastor Knox has been doing a little series on, on um, friendship, friendship within the, in the scriptures there, uh, and if you'd like to join, we'll be getting in that, beginning in that in the fellowship hall after we're done here in just a few moments. We will start regular Bible classes, our, our regular schedule of them, September 18th, as well as Sunday school too. Um, there's sign-ups for that out in a little table. As soon as you go out to the church here into the narthex, uh, it has all the different options. There's Tuesdays, there's women's, there's men's, uh, there's Wednesdays, there's the regular Sunday ones, and as well as a Bic refresher. So uh, avail yourself of the opportunity to continue to grow and be reminded of what God says in his word so that you can continue to mature in faith. We have school starting this next week, our welcome back chapel kind of get-together services today uh, at 6 p.m. If you know somebody who's supposed to be here, remind them, ask them if they remember that so that they can come. Uh, we also have uh, our ice cream social that follows it and preschool as well. So all of our school stuff today kind of has a beginning and we start this week with preschool starting after Labor Day. 
as well as, uh, speaking of Labor Day, Labor Day has early worship on the Thursday before instead of the Monday of. Uh, that'll be, I believe it's September 1st. Uh, there's a special service on that night, a Thursday night, 6.30, like we normally have service. So if you're going away and want to attend church before you go, um, come and join me on six, at 6.30 on that Thursday before. Check your mailboxes, lots of stuff going on, a lot of things ramping up, uh, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can be involved in and, and get a hold of and just have your hands in, which will be helpful to not just our family of faith, uh, but also our overall ministry here at St. Paul's. So God's blessings to you and the rest of your day, and hope to see you soon. Thanks.